Most Power BI reports look colorful but confusing. Have you ever shown your dashboard to a manager and they said, it looks nice but I can't read it fast. That's where IBCS comes in, the International Business Communication Standards. It is a simple set of rules that makes your chart clear, consistent everywhere and executive ready. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an IBCS style column chart using only native clustered column chart visual. As you can see on my screen, this is how an IBCS style column chart is interpreted. So here you can see these overlapping bars. The behind bar is the forecast data or the plan data. And we compare that with the actual data, which is overlapping on the top. And then we show the percentage increase or decrease between the actual and forecast data. So let's start the video and let me show you how you can quickly build this. As you can see in the data, we have certain measures and this is the table. This table is having actual sales and forecast sales showing over the month year for this product. So let's create a clustered column chart. And uh, here I will show month year and forecast sales. So this is showing the forecast sales over month. And let's also add the actual sales. So this is typically a clustered column chart showing the actual sales and forecast sales over different months. Let's quickly format it in seconds. I'm going to go to the size and style and let's enable the visual border, make it gray, corners make it 10, add the shadow to the bottom and turn off the legend with the grid lines and make it solid because I like. And the last thing, let's add the padding. So I'll add the padding as 20 to each corner. Lastly, let's remove these titles and this month here as well. So our chart is ready. And uh, we can also change this title if you want, which shows forecast sales. So I will say forecast versus actual sales by month year or by month. Yeah, so our formatting is done and it shows forecast versus actual sales by month. So in the IBCS style, what we generally do is for the forecast data or the plan data. So in our case, we are comparing the actual data with the forecast data. So the forecast data bars will don't have any color. It will just have border. Let me show you how to do it. For that, we'll go to the column section and let's choose forecast sales from here and the color, let's make it white uh, and enable the border. So the forecast data is shown in this way and the actual data, uh, let's choose actual sales and make it black. So actual data is shown in this way. Border is not needed. So in the IBCS standard, the forecast data is shown as it doesn't have any fill. And the actual data is having a black color solid fill. Now we have these two data and then we'll have to add the percentage increase or decrease using a green or red bar. So for that, first of all, let me show you. So we have used this actual and forecast sales. So actual sales is basically sum of actual sales. Forecast sales is just sum of forecast sales. We have other measures like variance. Actual sales minus forecast sales is the difference that is called variance. And we have variance percentage. So basically the difference by the forecast sales so it gives us the variance percentage that is percentage increase or decrease so we are going to use this i will show you how we have these three measures max value uh, which is calculating the max value so basically if actual sales is greater than forecast sales actual sales well else forecast sales so basically it's finding out the top point between these two so it's just calculating the maximum value now why we are calculating this maximum value is we want to create an error bar which will go up to this value. I will come to this green and red later. First, let's go to the error bars. So we'll go to this error bar section and here we'll select forecast sales. I will enable this and I will select the upper bound as the green value. Let me show you the measure. So this measure is if variance is greater than zero, then maximum value. So if you see, this is creating a bar wherever the variance is greater than zero. What is variance? when the actuals is greater than forecast. Here you can see for March, the actuals is less than the forecast. So that's why we cannot see the error bar here. And for others, wherever the actual sales is greater, you can see the error bar. So that's why we have calculated this green measure. Let me clarify a bit more. How does this error bar works is, if I select forecast sales, it means that the error bars are going to start from the top of this forecast sales. You can see this forecast sales, it is starting from the top of this forecast sales and going till the point which we will specify, which is nothing but the maximum value. If you see the green measure, 
anyway it will show the maximum value as the output green or red but what's the point of creating this green and red it's just because we want to differentiate these two with different colors if we have just used the maximum value it would have created the green and red bars simultaneously which could be confusing or misleading so that is the use of green and red measure so here uh, forecast sales i've used green bars because i want this to start from forecast sales and go till the maximum value next i am going to color this bar color as green make the width maybe 10 8 whatever we like we can do that and uh, we can turn off this marker and turn off this tooltip for the actual sales in case the variance is less than zero the bar should start from the top of the actual sales like it should start from here and not from the forecast sales so here we are going to give the upper bound as the maximum value that is the maximum value coming from the red bar so that it covers only the red points and not the green points so let's make it red we make the width as 8 and the marker let's turn off the marker let's turn off the tooltip here we can also make the border size as 0 you can see the error bars is having a border white border if you see here maybe you can see the errors error bar is having white border so for that we can make it as 0 for red one and for the green one as well next we want the bars to be overlapping so the actual sales should be overlapping over the forecast sales for that we can go to columns again let's close this and let's go to columns again here if i select all in the columns you can see this layout option is enabled and from here we can turn on this overlap and increase the space between cities and uh, we can adjust accordingly and adjust this between character categories as well so now you can see it's oriented in a nice way and we can see clearly the percentage increase and decrease the width looks correct so you can play with these two to make your design look good for our case it's good maybe i can increase it a little more yeah the next thing would be i want to show a data label which will show percentage increase and decrease at the top of each bar so for that what we can do is we can add this maximum value in the y-axis I will tell you why we added this because I want the data label to be on top and not overlapping on the bars that's why I added this and this way I can ensure that the data label is always be on the top of the bars and next what we can do is we can go to the columns again and select max value from here and make the color transparency as 100% so that it will be vanished and uh, we are going to enable the data labels here and what we can do is we can turn on every data labels except the max value because we want the data labels to be on top so let's select max value in the data labels and let's come to the value section here we are showing the maximum value instead of showing the maximum value let's choose the variance percentage and let's increase it make it 10 and in the display units let's make it as none so now we can see uh, this is showing plus and uh, minus for the variance percentage so variance percentage is basically uh, I'm using a dynamic formatting so generally if you use this uh, measure and make it as percentage format uh, it will show negative percentages but for positives it will not show the positive sign for that the dynamic formatting and uh, here you can change the format so you will have to add plus at the start so this basically means if the value is greater than zero it will use this formatting if the value is less than zero it will use this formatting and if the value is zero it would use this formatting so generally it will be like this which doesn't look good so we can add plus here so it will give us the plus sign before the numbers next i want to change the colors of these as well so i'm going to go to this color section effects button traditional formatting and here i'm going to choose rules choose as variance or variance percentage anything is fine so for greater than zero number less than max it will be a green color let's add two new rules for equal to zero number let's choose it as any gray color and for this one greater than equal to minimum and less than zero make it number and so this will be red color let's click on ok so if you see for positive numbers it is showing plus and green color which is easy to identify which is going down or which is going up 
So this is how we create IBCS styled column chart with the help of native Power BI visuals. These are the books that I highly recommend buying that can take your Power BI skills to the next level. These three books can cover almost all the aspects of Power BI from DAX to Power Query to the overall Power BI dashboarding. You can find the link of these books in the description. Check them out if you want to level up faster. I hope you liked this video and have learned something new from this video. If you like my videos, consider subscribing my channel for future updates. Till then, goodbye and thanks for watching.